Well, hello everyone. It's Black Mountain Talks, and this is Lena with you. I'm not, and I'm not uh, the only host of this show today because today I'm joined by Zindernov, who mm -hmm. used to work for for Slavengrad, but now he's on Vesni Crew, and our regular uh, expert Mike Mikhailovich. So I think we, this is going to be a very interesting video mm -hmm. because we are going to discuss a lot of events which took place last week. We mm -hmm. skipped last week. We are sorry for that. And we have very interesting news this week. And I think that, Zin, you may start maybe with your questions. Right, right. So one of the big things that came out this week is uh, Stoltenberg. He made a comment that apparently two-thirds of the residents of NATO countries support Ukraine in the special military operation, which uh, that statement in of itself is somewhat open to interpretation. And while people in the West are under a lot of propaganda, and there, there is definitely people who support Ukraine due to the fact that they've been, in my opinion, effectively brainwashed by the mainstream media. I think that it's worth dissecting some of the other polls that have come out regarding uh, support for Ukraine in NATO countries. Now, I'm in America, uh, Florida specifically. I mean, not today, but uh, I'm on the road today. But no normally, I live in Florida, and it, that's a very Republican-leaning state. So you kind of get mixed support uh, for Ukraine. And a lot of the support for the Ukrainian project in America largely comes from the Democratic Party. And that's reflected in the polling. In, in the most recent polling, uh, where they ask Americans, do you think that the United States is giving too much aid to Ukraine, the right amount of aid to the Ukraine, or too little aid to the Ukraine, uh, basically the Democratic Party, Democrat voters are the only ones who have a about a 50-50 split where about 44% say that the United States should be doing more to support Ukraine. Uh, but for Republicans and independents, basically you get a very small minority that thinks the United States should be doing more to support Ukraine and a majority of Republicans are against increasing aid to Ukraine. And basically for independence, it's a little more mixed, but for independence, um, 46 percent think that we should be reducing aid to Ukraine. So people who are not either Republican or Democrat, uh, if, if you take out the I don't know section of that poll, actually a majority of people who are in the center want to reduce aid to the Ukraine. So I think. Uh, Stoltenberg is being a little disingenuous when he says that the people of the NATO countries uh, have this two-thirds support for aiding the Ukraine. And, I mean, would you agree with that from your own experience, Mike? Well, Stoltenberg is a really idiot, so definitely he's the he's mouthpiece of, of NATO, um, exposed, uh, he, he's talking uh, totally contradictory things, and uh, um, I agree that it is... Uh, brainwashing um, uh, involved in the Western media because all of that stuff, uh, marketing, uh, mass media, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, but uh, the regular people are pretty much busy with their own lives, trying to uh, trying to make from week to week or from day to day, from month to month uh, with their own problems. And uh, upon all of those problems, which, uh, which are uh, piling on them, uh, coming uh, um, immigration, then there is a problem with uh, uh, price increase, uh, cost of living increase, uh, and uh, all of that is uh, media trying to, or governments uh, trying to blame on uh, Russia, but people slowly but steady are really getting aware of what is really going on. So I would say in Canada, for instance, we have a large um, Ukrainian diaspora and mostly people from Western Ukraine. So yeah, obviously politicians, our politicians, they are going to do whatever they can. They're going to say whatever they can so that they can uh, uh, assure votes because the politicians, the only, they're only interested in votes. They, they don't care about anything else. Um, uh, the other thing is... Uh, uh, once uh, when you when people in Europe really realize uh, who is who is uh, who is against them, uh, things things may change. But for that, uh, it take a time. So definitely, uh, answer for your question will be: Stoltenberg is the one who is in charge to take uh, to to talk nonsense, uh, to as I said, to, to be really idiot uh, in front of media. It, there, there is a couple of uh, more. Macron is now is. Uh, Joining in, the, in that that club, uh, but uh, definitely they're not they're not talking the truth. 
they're not talking the truth. And I think the people are uh, fed enough of the idea that uh, money sh uh, or finances uh, should go to Ukraine instead to be uh, spent on domestic uh, domestic needs. And sooner or later, uh, the tide is going to turn. You know, it's it's it's, it's imminent. It's just a matter of time, not yes or no, but it's uh, um, the question is when uh, the public uh, will turn um, against uh, the, those those kind of programs. In the states, uh, people uh, people are busy with, uh, with their own uh, their own lives, and of course, Democrats, uh, portion of Democrats, uh, owners of the media, um, the people in the Congress, uh, whatever they 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 uh, uh, artificially inflating the inflating the stuff. Uh, but uh, bottom line, uh, nothing, nothing lasts forever. So eventually, mm -hmm. one day, all, all of their uh, their concept will fell to the bottom of the cesspit. Right, and I noticed that um, when I was actually looking up more polling on the American side of things, uh, there was actually a, a poll from February that said that two thirds of Americans actually support urgent U.S. diplomacy to end the war in Ukraine. So when they asked a more detailed question to Americans about uh, what do you think the United States should be doing to end the war in the Ukraine, basically two thirds of Americans are saying that uh, the United States, the Ukraine need to sit down with Russia and actually have negotiations and actually even make compromises. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that is the that is the only way. Uh, bear in mind that all of that stuff that go, uh, um, all of that help credits, whatever U.S. Uh, sending to Ukraine, this, uh, these are all stocks of the weapons, uh, and uh, there there are a lot of uh, money laundering um, uh, involved. Uh, money is uh, coming back to the military. I would say military investment complex because before it was military industrial complex, but military investment complex and to the to the pockets of the uh, lawmakers. Who are the lawmakers? Yeah, just look at the Congress and look at the look at the Senate. So uh, pe people, normal people, will, uh, will of course understand that uh, the only way to solve the, the, the crisis is to sit and negotiate. Uh, current American government uh, they they will continue with this stuff and they want to push uh, for more escalation. But um, what I see is that the Things are not going very well, so they will dump uh, on the naive Europeans. So the, the, they create a problem, but uh, they will dump everything to Europeans to try to solve it. And Europe, Europe, no matter how uh, united they uh, they uh, they look in the paper, <laughs> this is completely disorganized uh, bunch mm -hmm. of countries that uh, uh, hardly trust to each uh, to each other. Of course, there are the, those. Um, there, there are a few former uh, former Russian wars of. Uh, but uh, countries the, which are uh, on the top of that barking list uh, against Russia intervention or whatever. But uh, for the nor normal people, there is no chance that, that anybody uh, wish this stuff, this stuff to continue. And it's it's evident uh, there is no uh, Ukrainian victory. It's, it, it is simply impossible event. Mm. Probability is zero in all of that stuff, no matter uh, what is involved. And uh, it is in interest of common people and. Uh, uh, ordinary citizens of, of any of those countries that stuff to, to stop as soon as possible so that uh, all of that uh, money allocated uh, to the black hole of uh, name Ukraine not, not not it's not about people it's about politicians and their government that that money is allocated to really to, uh, for the for the citizens in the, in those countries for the ordinary people Mm -hmm. And that was, I'm um, sorry, I may interrupt. I, I read a very interesting article. I might try even try to show it to you. Mm -hmm. It was uh, from Germany about Taurus weapons. It's from the last week when I prepared for the show. And here uh, you can see that there is no unity within uh, German uh, even Parliament, opposition. Yeah, yeah it's, it's uh, even speaking about oppositional parties. Part of the opposition thinks that uh, oh we should like uh, give the uh, give Taurus to the Ukraine to so to make it uh, uh, cause as much damage to Russia as possible to make Russia quit and and part of the opposition uh, they say well no we shouldn't do that so yeah. there is no unity even within the opposition itself yeah exactly and and Germans funny. Germans need to remember what happened in 1945 and who who entered Berlin in 1945. Uh, those uh, Taurus missiles that they have it will change nothing. Even, even even if they deliver all of them, half of them will not work uh, uh, because of some uh, some malfunctions. Um, they may uh, they may cause some damage, but you know every wonder uh, lasts for uh, for three days, and 
all of that the talks about uh, um, wonder weapons is just uh, entertainment for the fools yeah and one more question also about nato uh because now we know that germany uh, as if they agreed that they will not deliver taurus uh like mi missiles in any way because there was like proposal from great britain as if germany delivers missiles to great britain and then great britain resells them to to the <laughs> ukraine but yeah <laughs> it was a very like <laughs> i don't know how to call it, that it's a like a carousel of a sort <laughs> it is uh, it is childish because uh, in, the, in the sales uh, uh, there is, a, of course, end-user agreement, and uh, if Germany uh, st strictly put in in, uh, in that sale, uh, let's call that sale, if they put that it, it can be delivered to the third party, there is nothing uh, that uh, UK do legally. But you know what? It's a perfect Albion, so they they will do whatever they want, and of course they they try to do that. Uh, look, the guy with the. Um, Barber and friendly uh, hair. It's uh, that guy is, is is trying to to get uh, UK in more mess than than it exists. But it is what it is. It, it it's what they do. What they are uh, um, trying to suck from the from the society, and it is what it is. But uh, whatever whatever happened uh, with those decisions, maybe they one day they will definitely send something to some of those uh, Taurus uh, missiles to UK. They will rush that uh, to Ukraine, but they will not have a platform to launch uh, launch from. Uh, so, uh, bottom line, it is going to even if they deliver tomorrow, it is going to change nothing. Outcome mm -hmm. outcome of this war is um, is evident. It, it's more uh, and it will be uh, it will be what Russia actually planned to do that. Yeah, but in, yeah. and I always remember Scott, Scott Scott Ritter. You know when he is there is no such thing as game changer and of course, uh, absolutely. everyone and. To me, it seems it seems to me like in in the Ukraine they are waiting for some game changer to arrive, arrive, but that game changer will will not arrive as there is no no such thing as game changer. Actually, there is a game changer, but they, uh, it's a not uh, it's not a weapon. It's a mind, because mm -hmm. those in charge need just to to think of, to turn on uh, their brains, and. Uh, to start to uh, to think how they can end the war, and the, the only thing that end the war is uh, there is a two, two, two actually two things: um, uh, capitulation of Ukraine, which is going now. Uh, all this war is going to toward that direction, or simply to um, uh, to force Zelensky and his uh, and his henchmen to sit uh, on the negotiation uh, table with Russia. But um, they will never have the same situation that was in in uh, Minsk agreement. They will never have again the same situation that was in Istanbul. Uh, and, uh, and the Russians were clear. They they simply said, uh, as time passed, conditions uh, uh, conditions to end the war will not work for Ukraine. Definitely. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I also have one thing to remember about Zelensky. It was also last week, but it was when he was in Odessa with uh, uh, Greek, uh, like uh, prime minister, prime minister. Yeah, prime pr prime minister, and he said that there was some strikes carried out as as if Russia was trying to kill Zelensky. I think it was his attempt to draw attention to his figure uh, because. He is the, he's he's an actor. He's a clown uh, that um, act like a president, the most the best paid actor in the world, of all times, uh, and uh, that that attack that he's talking about it has nothing to do with him. If they want to eliminate him, they will do that. Definitely, they will do that. But Zelensky is is actually now playing for Russia because he is now pushing his country deeper and deeper in, 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 into the hole, and um, as the time passes, they are going to lose more and more territories. Uh, he's uh, he's just just a, just a puppet. He's playing uh, um, uh, under the music uh, from the West. Uh, Victoria Nuland, Boris Johnson, a uh, uh, couple of now uh, now Emmanuel Macron. He's uh, he's joining the uh, asylum takeovers. So uh, bottom line, whatever. If Russia really wanted to eliminate him, he wouldn't be walking uh, today. So that's true. Yeah. And uh, with his behavior, with his stuff, he's destroying what, whatever is left of, of his country. And again, Ukraine is a wonderful country, wonderful people. But they, they, they get caught in those uh, uh, false uh, promises and uh, talks with the Western politicians. Mm. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately. I mean, I know many Ukrainians, wonderful, wonderful people, beautiful country. But uh, well, uh, see, see how... Uh, 
there's one ex expression that uh, a few lunatics can mess up uh, something that a thousand uh, genius can, uh, can fix it. Mm. Yeah, because I now remembered some of my experience. I also was in the Ukraine once. It was Western Ukraine, actually. And, you know, it's uh, I found that country beautiful and I like the people, too. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's really like a pity to me, and that's a big grief that this yeah. country is undergoing is under such circumstances now. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And one more thing about NATO, and I will allow you to to uh, ask questions. No, go right ahead. Okay, mm -hmm. and it also happened from last week. I just couldn't help but to ask: uh, Is Sweden uh, joining NATO? Well. <laughs> Will she, what was that? That was my like only question. What well, for? Yeah, Sweden tossed the neutral neutrality for two hundred something years. They tossed it in the garbage, and because their government uh, is nothing by the puppet of the WEF, uh, Klaus Schwab, and uh, those lunatics, uh, they they always cooperated with NATO. Uh, with NATO, there is there is no issues with that. But joining the joining the the pact uh, is simply put uh, Swedish territory uh, under the scope of Russian ballistic missiles. In the case of war, uh, just one missile will be enough to to finish the the Sweden and Finland uh, together. So um, it's it's a foolish idea, but hey, it is what it is. The government uh, was elected by people, and if people want to be in the NATO, so be it. But uh, tossing uh, tossing something that um, that was tradition for 200 years, not not to uh, be neutral country, even they have cooperation both with Russia and and, uh, and uh, NATO. Well, it's it's their decision. Uh, but um, in the case of of um, any major. Uh, major uh, escalation Sweden Sweden Finland uh, will be gone and so I guess getting back to I get the unity of Europe it seems that uh, Macron basically embarrassed himself mostly with his speech about sending NATO troops to the Ukraine and it the support for that just doesn't seem to be there uh, as well which I you think that maybe he was chosen as the person to float that idea just to see how people respond to it? Well, uh, yeah, yeah I, I believe there, there is something because uh, he, he wanted to, uh, to gain some popularity to, to act as a tough guy, to act as a mini Napoleon. Uh, he doesn't uh, enjoy the support of French society, even there is a uh, hoax that they want to to, to march uh, in Russia. They want to fight. Uh, um, there, there are a few few generals um, leaning to that, but those sane enough for simply see that there is no solution. There is uh, France is uh, too weak uh, to even 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 do anything. They have foreign legion, but bear in mind that two thirds of foreign legions are Slavs, people right. from people uh, Eastern Europe, and there are many of Russians uh, there. Uh, they they may refuse uh, to go to to Ukraine, but you know what? If 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 any any of those, just just one guy is enough to send the coordinates where uh, legionaries are, and they will get uh, Iskander or or some other missiles. So French doesn't have enough capacity, doesn't have enough enough feeling, but they have lunatics uh, who has uh, his marriage problems. Uh, uh, or and also uh, problems with his party, problem with his own population, which. Uh, Basically, a protest against his uh, his reforms. He's the uh, WEF uh, puppet, and he's he's doing whatever they uh, they told him to to do. He need, they need uh, they need some um, uh, loudspeaker to, to go out and uh, bang into the drums uh, to to act as a, as a tough guy, and of course it will be support in the, in the Western Europe, but um, nothing. He is nothing about nothing more than than a village idiot, and there is a quite there are quite few of them uh, in. In Europe, mm. yeah, and in in that earlier poll that I mentioned, uh, that poll was from the Quincy Institute, by the way, the one about uh, the two thirds of Americans wanting the United States to get Ukraine and negotiate a settlement. Um, yeah. And according to that poll, only five percent of Americans are in favor of sending American troops to the Ukraine. Uh, but of course, you brought up the issue of mercenaries mm -hmm. and the. Uh, the Ministry of the Russian Ministry of Defense recently came out with their report on uh, mercenary activity in the Ukraine going back to the start of the special military operation. And uh, according to them, basically 40% of mercenaries that have gone into the Ukraine have 
basically died or I guess been irretrievably injured to the point, which is a pretty high casualty rate, uh, 40%. Uh, uh, mm. Yeah. See, discussion about numbers, it's uh, it's tricky because uh, we don't have the proper information. Russian intelligence, they have it. But I will also say they, they're, they're going to pump to pump a little bit, a uh, little bit more. But definitely there are casualties among the mercenaries. Uh, uh, I saw those numbers and um, I, I don't think that it's really 40 percent, but uh, it, 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 it should be maybe between 15 and 20 percent. Uh, uh, all casualties, uh, let's say 200 and 300 uh, classification. Uh, and but uh, bear in mind, the most mercenaries are actually from Poland and Georgia, Gruzins, mm. uh, Georgians. So uh, most mercenaries from there. Now they they hire people from uh, South America. They promise them <laughs> salaries. Mm. Never, they will never get those those salaries. Uh, and uh, they're expendable. See. For Western mercenaries, the mercenaries need to stay alive to be paid. Right. Because yeah. they're going, they're going to push those from countries which they think that they're inferior. So Georgians will, will be sacrificed, Colombians, Brazilians, Argentinians, whoever. They're, they're simply just going to push them. They're going to try to save Americans, Brits, uh, uh, and keep them, keep them rear, in the rear of the, of the <laughs> excuse me, of the, of the front line. But um, the problem with mercenaries is uh, like a dog of war. They, if they get caught, uh, they are not protected under the Geneva Convention. Of course, Russia is trying to to is to save them as much as they can. But you know, you you can't control the uh, control that stuff. And uh, I quite agree with that. Uh, they are not under the they are not uh, soldiers under the Geneva Conventions. And uh, only one thing is. Uh, Expecting them if they're caught, of course, uh, uh, they try to. Russia try to be human, uh, to act humanly and uh, honestly with them. But uh, definitely, it's not going to happen all the time. Uh, bottom line: Foreign Legion uh, that was um, assembled in 2000 in 2022 uh, doesn't exist anymore. The, uh, these are just remnants. Uh, because uh, many of them, as soon as they, they got the time off, they grabbed their passports and, uh, and left. South Americans, they can't because they confiscated their, their passports. Uh, Georgians, they're, they're trying to heal old wounds since uh, from 2008. Uh, Poles, mm -hmm. yeah, Poles, uh, Poles are there. Uh, they, they, they had the casualties. Uh, and But that, that is the way how uh, to bloody the, the, in the, in the um, battle hardened uh, uh, troops, because uh, down the road, maybe they will, those, those, uh, those mercenaries now will be core of the troops that will take uh, Western Ukraine. Time will tell. I mean, we, we can just uh, speculate about the numbers of casualties, about uh, intentions. Uh, but um, Maybe new, some new mercenaries, mercenaries will come, but the interest, see, the interest is far, far away from the from the one that was in 2022. So it's declining, declining slowly, uh, not even slowly, decli declining uh, uh, steady. And that that, that was going to be my follow-up question too. I was under the impression that the flow of mercenaries had slowed to a crawl, that the majority came over at the beginning of the special military operation and. I think they've come back and they've said, you know, guys have said, oh, I've been to Afghanistan, I've been to Iraq, and this is something else entirely. Oh, you know? Absolutely. This, this, this is the, the full scale war on the mm -hmm. front line. So and uh, those those guys who were in Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, one thing is to fight uh, goat keepers or uh, sheep keepers, uh, herders, than to fight a regular, a regular army. And uh, they learned that uh, lesson hard. So and uh, I don't I, I don't see how they, they can increase those mercenaries. The only thing that if they, for instance, uh, and okay. offer them to uh, 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 compensation to, to get the citizenship and uh, rights, uh, uh, other rights to go to, to Ukraine for, let's say, a year, two, three. So that is, that is quite possible. But you know what? Um, uh, immigrants uh, in Europe and U.S., they didn't come to fight. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, bear in mind that in Europe, uh, hundreds of thousand uh, uh, military-aged men. Uh, these men are not friend, friend, friendly oriented to to the Western governments, and um, th this is about ten, fifteen, maybe even twenty brigades. They can turn on against the against the governments if they try to force forcefully uh, send them to Ukraine. It will be trouble. Mm.
Right. Some some of them may be joined. Some of them may be simply simply joined, uh, uh, and uh, get caught in those promises uh, that they will get something. But yeah, let's say uh, percentage of those who who can maybe achieve something is maybe less than five percent. And uh, I I have like a question. Yeah, maybe a question because uh, you know uh, there there are people like of uh, certain like ideological views. Uh, as we, as I, I would mildly call, call that, who come to the Ukraine because of ideology and they yeah. fight for, like, say, Azov or so. Yeah, Nazi. Yeah, yeah, Nazi. Yeah. 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 And uh, if they really gain uh, milit real military combat experience and they go back to Europe, the, wouldn't they be posing a threat to European society too? Because uh, well, they are trained, they are experienced, and they had uh, like uh, absolutely. They want to keep on fighting. Absolutely, because they they can be became loose cannons, uh, people with traumas uh, from war, uh, combat stress, or uh, post traumatic stress disorder, how they call it uh, uh, nowadays. Um, yeah, uh, these people are at risk for, for uh, society. Mm. Right. And yeah. so I guess uh, the next issue that I think has probably been the big, biggest issue of this last week, uh, coming into the Russian elections, we saw the basically terrorist attacks on Belgorod over the past three days. Uh, it seems like today the Russian forces have base, have put down that incursion completely and that the last of the Ukrainian DRGs retreated back over the border over minefields and actually were wiped out in minefields. And the, the Ministry of Defense says that uh, the border region is now under control. Um, and of course, this all happened right before the elections in the Russian Federation started. Yeah. It was planned, a uh, planned activity, and there was uh, one of few actions that they, uh, that let's say, Vicky Nuland uh, said that it's going to happen, and Zelensky and uh, uh, Kirill Budenov, uh, they said that it, uh, something is going to happen. Uh, it was just destruction, destruction, no, not against Russians, but this destruction to the um, to the own public. So they said, okay, some uh, Ukrainian troops are invading Russia. It is pure nonsense. Militarily, uh, strategically, and tactically, this is this is absolutely zero effect of that. The, they put those mercenaries, uh, actually they're not even mercenaries, those Russian, like a Vlasovci from the World War II collab collaborators, they pushed them uh, uh, to attack their own country basically and uh, they didn't progress uh, more than a border. So their, their casualties are um, terrific, they, they suffer so many casualties that as a combat unit they lost it, they lost that, uh, those abilities. I, I believe it was 1,500 in three days basically. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I would say it's something like that, both uh, 200 and 300 uh, uh, classifications. So, uh, for the for the uh, for the public uh, stance, yeah, they may have effect because they they attacking Russia, so they are talking about that. But uh, militarily, it's a disaster. It's simply a disaster. Yeah, and if you can see if they have uh, enough troops and equipment to send uh, in do those kind of almost suicidal uh, missions, uh, yeah, so be it. They, uh, and you know, Russian intelligence, they have following that, they know exactly who um, those plans is. Because I believe that uh, among those Russians who, who are serving in that legion, there are people who are actually planted there. So they know exactly uh, when and how those attacks will, will follow. And uh, Russia simply um, let them let them uh, come to the border, so they're they're simply within the within the range, and um, attack them uh, from the flanks, cover them with artillery, with uh, with the bombing, and that was it. Mm, yeah, I really wonder why they thought that would have been successful, or or why they would think that uh, by attacking the border region they would actually negatively impact the elections perhaps because you would think it would almost drive people to be more likely to, to yeah. vote for Vladimir Putin not yeah. of course he had vast majority of support anyway um was yeah, it a calculated yeah. decision <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it was calculated because uh, they uh they wanted to create uh, some effects so that they can sell that to the West, uh, but um, they had ex they had expendable troops because they they toss not not uh, Ukrainians but they toss those um, from the Russian legion maybe some foreigners, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and um, it was it was simply naive. Or the military uh, point uh, or tactical point it it is it is simply disaster mm -hmm. to, to use troops like that, but. Uh, 
so be it. I'm, Napoleon said, never interrupt your enemy while he's making mistakes. So, mm -hmm. it, it, uh, uh, and they're making mistakes. So, and uh, but they're paying for the, those mistakes. Right. Unfortunately, it's only human lives. Doesn't matter. Uh, are they uh, opposition or uh, whatever? Humans, humans are humans. So, mm -hmm. disaster. Simply, simply a tactical disaster for. Uh, for Ukraine, but in the Western media, you will see, oh, they, they occupied that village or the other village. And if you look at those pictures, you can easily check that uh, those uh, PR pictures were actually taken inside the Ukraine in their villages. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to add here on those attacks, I have a friend in Rostov region, actually two friends, and uh, there was a massive attack of uh, drones on the Rostov region, if I'm not mistaken. The 41 drone was downed by Russian... Um, yeah, they, they, they tried to and attack. The, uh, the command from my friend was, they are trying to scare us, but we, are, but we know that Ukraine uh, is, losing, is losing. So we are sure that it's, it's their last, last attempt to, like, just to do just anything. Yeah, it's about like a, uh, terrorist attacks. Uh, they they try to attack Taganrog, uh, Beriv uh, aviation plant. Uh, they're trying to attack Belgorod. Uh, they even try to uh, attack Stalingrad or Volgograd. Uh, you know, uh, no air defense uh, is a hundred percent. Uh, penetration proof, so it did always something will, will go through. But uh, Russia is doing whatever they can, and they're doing that successfully to prevent the, those attacks. Uh, what Russia needs is basically to move that front line uh, further west, so toward uh, Dnieper and uh, out of range, uh, drones and, and artillery and bombs. Um, attacking Russian. Uh, they, that stuff, if, for instance, if they're doing that stuff against some Western countries, it may um, it may affect uh, morale. But Slavs are completely different because uh, more to, you try to to scare them, or try to intimidate them, uh, uh, resistance uh, is getting is getting harder and harder. So they're basically uh, giving uh, ex excellent uh, excellent excuses, excellent uh, opportunity for for President Putin to to fortify his position. Uh, in, in the country. So that's the reason why I said that uh, with, with those incursions, uh, those attacks, uh, Zelensky is actually working for, for Russia. They will never be able to, to uh, uh, create, uh, uh, to divide Russian society. There will be, of course, opposition, there will be some terrorist attacks, but uh, uh, tell me one country in the West that has 80% uh, <laughs> approval, approval rate for, uh, for president. In Canada, we have that jerk in Ottawa that has approval of 15% or 20%. Hmm. Yeah, and in, in America, Biden, I think, has a uh, 38 percent approval okay. rating. Yeah, but th that is after also after the uh, Polish little bit of. Uh, <laughs> right. And a disapproval rating above 50 percent. So, yeah. you know, right, right. And I exactly. And so did you have another issue? Oh, I, yeah, I had some questions, but they are not so close related to the Ukraine, but I wanted to yeah, ask. Absolutely. Oh, maybe one would be related. It is a fresh, fresh one. It's from the today, and it was uh, about Russia, who uh, Russia said that forces carried out 50 group strikes over the past week, used precision we weapon. Mm -hmm. And I have also read that, uh, uh, like, targets of the attacks was as if infrastructure which could be used for to allocate f-16s yeah yeah definitely uh um f-16 first uh they can hide them basically they just remove uh, wings and they can hire in um, an industrial plant uh industrial uh, be, uh, sufficiently uh, large industrial building but uh, to operate them they need airports because they need pristine um, airports uh, pristine um, air, airfields and uh, runways Everything is complicated and very demanding airplane regarding to that stuff. Maintenance is also uh, uh, complicated. Uh, for now, uh, Ukrainians, they have uh, Russian airplanes, which are they're very familiar with, uh, and uh, they know how to do the stuff. Uh, Russian airplanes can take off from the highways. Uh, uh, they, can, <laughs> they can take off from the highways with, with the potholes. So no, no, not a big issue, but F-16 need really <laughs> laboratory clean, uh, clean runway. Uh, Russia, Russia is following uh, uh, what is going on in the uh, in the Ukrainian rear, and I'm 100% sure that as soon as the first F-16 uh, 
uh, is parking some of those buildings, they're going to blow the buildings. Uh, for, for the, if any of those airplanes actually is delivered, uh, they said, I think it's six uh, out of 45, they will de deliver six. So they're, they're going to put them in the hardened uh, uh, shelters, but a uh, few Russian bombs can penetrate to those shelters. Uh, it's it's just a, the, all the story about F-16 is uh, it's just a PR stance, not, nothing, nothing more than that. Right. And Russia is going to take them, take them uh, out uh, sooner or later. As soon as they they, they pop up, I, I have some information that uh, few of them may may even uh, arrived and uh, the buildings were hit. But uh, it's just for now, it's just a speculation. Time will tell them anyway. And so, speaking of the air war, um, I kind of wanted to get your opinion on one of the big stories the last couple of weeks. Uh, the Ukrainian side, of course, was reporting. This record number of downings of F-35s and uh, I'm sorry, SU-35s and SU-34s, um, mainly SU-34s, and ba basically claiming that, and, and most of the people I've spoken to have said that, well, that's complete nonsense. They haven't shot down any. Uh, yeah. What's your opinion on that one? Nonsense. Right. right. Nonsense. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's simply PR stunts that they're, they're using. Uh, they... Uh, if they, uh, if they, before when they when they shot down a few of them uh, in the previous years, uh, they showed the wreck, they showed the pilots. The, uh, but uh, no, nowadays it's, it's just uh, some just a turning uh, attention of the public to, uh, from from the real problems that Ukrainian oh, yeah. is crumbling. Ukraine, it's not uh, destroyed yet, but um, it, it it is a war of attrition. Ukrainian forces are grinded. They are grinded with a very very heavy casualties. Unfortunately mm -hmm. for people, it's very, very heavy casualty uh, toll on uh, on the Ukrainian uh, military. And uh, telling people some uh, fairy tales about all those planes, uh, it's just uh, trying to keep morale up. Uh, they try to put those uh, long range uh, in the newer Western systems uh, closer to the border. But uh, you, you saw a few days ago, they hit uh, they hit the Patriot. They dis destroy the whole whole battery. They kill a uh, uh, crew. They probably some of those uh, uh, Western contractors, uh, Americans or Germans, mm -hmm. maybe even Dutch, uh, were there. Uh, watch for the watch for uh, for the news. If if you see the new uh, if you see the news that some U.S. soldier dies somewhere in in the, um, in a car accident or something completely un, uh, unrelated, uh, this is the way how how they're trying to wash up uh, all all events. Uh, they uh, they try, and there is nothing not, nothing wrong uh, to try to do something. But uh, uh, I recently wrote in a, on a, on a Substack about those uh, glide bombs that Russia is using. They are launching them from 70 kilometers, 65 to 70 kilometers, uh, so that they can hit uh, anything within that distance uh, in the Ukrainian rear. And the Ukrainians try to bring uh, those long-range systems to, to try to intercept them. But those Russian planes, they never fly alone. There is always, let's say, two bombers plus two two fighters as an escort. So like a two pairs, uh, and uh, they control everything. If you can uh, launch a missile against them, they, they're going to pinpoint that location. Uh, navigators are going to punch the coordinates, and the, the bomb uh, will be away. Patriot need 20 minute, minutes to be packed, and the bomb will be there in uh, three minutes. Hmm. And so, yeah, I was going to bring up the issue about the Patriot launchers. Uh, I, I believe it was reported that two to three launchers were destroyed, Patriot missile launchers. And so recently, one, recently, yeah, recently, yeah, yeah. And, and and one radar uh, array, uh, which again, like I think each of those launchers are a billion dollars a piece. I don't know how much the radar is. Um, well, the, the battery, yeah, the battery is let's say is about six hundred million plus. So, mm -hmm. launcher is a launcher. I mean, it's not uh, not so important. If, if for instance Russia is able to destroy the radar with the crew, or command mm -hmm. command center game over that battery is useless they hit uh, a few batteries around kiev so those those are remnants see uh, patriot um, has a multiple launchers but now they're, they're trying to with those ambush tactics they're trying to put few launchers in the command center and radar just to keep them uh, as, uh, uh, as, as a small combat unit as, as possible mm. but russian intelligence uh, are working really really uh, well recently and uh, they can pinpoint locations of, of all of them the only thing that is really useful is uh, against uh, Russia was S-300 and the book. 
systems because book book especially because book is uh, is mobile one they can fire and be be on the way in 30 seconds but with all those western stuff uh, fancy stuff uh, looks great on the paper looks great on the on exercises or uh, shooting range but uh, in practice no no they're not they're not right and it's, and it's i would pure marketing it's pure marketing Right. And at and the, the same time that those Patriots were reported destroyed, I believe that uh, Patriot launchers and radars were destroyed. Um, in the previous month, I saw videos of apparently t like eight to ten other uh, air defense systems that Ukrainians yeah. had that were also destroyed, yeah. uh, including the, the Book and the S-300s. Yeah. Uh, so it, it does appear that they were rushing air defense systems to the front to probably deal with the SU-34s that are bringing all those air bombs into the Avdiivka region. Uh, yeah. And do you think maybe they were reporting all these successful downings of SU-34s as a way to say, you know, look, this was, we made the right decision. This was, you know, we, we did something and got a result. And like they were, they were trying to please their commanders by reporting that, oh, we did this. And of course, please the press, uh, please their masters in Washington, you know, that, this is working you know absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. it's 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 just a pr stance uh, uh bear in mind that uh, they they try that they're trying to uh, to do whatever they can i mean uh, no objection no objection to that but uh, uh the the problem of moving that that uh, mobile air defense systems uh, in the, in the uh, between the range uh, striking distance of glide glide bombs not even the mentioning uh, ballistic missiles and um, ever present 24 7 Russian intelligence over the uh, 70 kilometers, uh, everything from 70 kilometers up to the front line is controlled. So uh, they're trying simply to. To lift, uh, to lift uh, morale, but the, mm -hmm. the overall situation in, in Ukrainian military, those who wanted to fight, uh, they joined 2022, most of them are eliminated, it, I think now it's about uh, their fourth army, they're trying to send the fourth army, they're doing force, uh, forceful uh, enlistment, recruitation, the, uh, recruitment, they're trying to put the people uh, against their will, uh, and unfortunately those, those are the ones who, who will die within a few days, a few or a few weeks, until they get uh, uh, from, the, from the day they're put in the, in the, in the trenches. Or the, the best thing for them will be to call Volga and, uh, and, uh, and surrender. But the Ukrainians, they are not uh, providing them with the radius. That is, that is the problem. So they're running out of people. They're trying to lift morale of the population. They're trying to inflict the damage to, to Russian uh, bombers. Uh, they're trying... Uh, all, all, all tricks in the book, uh, but uh, you know you can try that once, but second time uh, and all the way uh, and all, all the time after they they, they, will, they will get hit. Russia has a, such a quantities of bombs that they, they can do that in hundreds per day. Mm. So right, as we've seen. Yeah, they're doing that. Mm. And and I, I've also been uh, doing my own little follow up research on the production of airframes that by by the Russian Federation. Uh, and there's a general rule of thumb that there's a, a two-year supply chain adjustment to increase production of modern uh, jets. And so we're basically coming up on the two-year, uh, not we're past the two-year anniversary, the start of the special military operation, but we're coming up on the two-year period from which point the Russian Federation really stepped up uh, manufacturing efforts. So I'd expect to see a big increase in the number of airframes produced per year. You know, basically this year should be really when things kick into overdrive, probably with tanks as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They they, they supply much more planes than they uh, than they uh, lost. So the, the, it, it, it is steady increase. Uh, but what what is actually very important with Russia? They have a huge base that can refurbish the old mm -hmm. frame. Especially tanks, uh, armored vehicles. They can do with uh, with the transport planes. They can do with uh, those um, A50 uh, uh, um, radar, radars. Yeah, they uh, systems. They they have abilities to do that, and they're they're doing that. Uh, and uh, what is what really that show us is that Russia 
is the capacities. They have a human re uh, resources to do that. They have uh, material resources to do that, and they are doing that. See, that is the, that is something that the Russian Ministry of Defense, especially uh, Minister Shoigu, uh, he is the one who is who is uh, orchestrating all of this stuff. And this is the the real value of the of the defense minister. Not like those jerks uh, in the West. They don't know what is tank, what is the car, what is the uh, telephone pole. Uh, they, if you show to, for instance, to, to Canadian defense minister, if you show him a uh, telephone pole, he will he will and say that this is a Russian missile. Yeah, he's definitely he will say that it's definitely missile. Uh, mm -hmm. Organization of Russian uh, Ministry of Defense is uh, on that level that uh, surpass uh, any 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 uh, Western uh, any Western uh, defense ministry for tenfold. And uh, Russia has a huge uh, stocks of those old uh, tanks and equipment. But bear in mind, this is uh, ingenious production because uh, they, they prepare them. Those tanks are designed for the exactly for the conditions which are now in Ukraine, and it will be maybe in uh, in the Western Europe. So they put those tanks, uh, those planes, in, in the storages. They pull them from storage. They use a month or two to refurbish them, send them to the front. What is even more important than that, um, they have uh, capacities to repair and make a turnover tenfold, 20 times, 20-fold uh, than, than the Ukrainians. So when people say, oh, Russian tank is destroyed. No, that tank is uh, hit. It will be uh, withdrawn to the to the rear, first, second, or third, lane, uh, third line of maintenance. It will be fixed, refurbished, and sent, sent back. Mm. Very simple. They're, they're, they're now pumping uh, new, new airplanes. Uh, their ammunition production is increasing um, exponentially they uh, mm -hmm. somebody may say why they bought them bought um, uh, shells from uh, north korea well north mm -hmm. korea is, a, is an ally and of course north korea uh, would, uh, would like to know how their shells will behave in the combat conditions one thing is to show that on, on the on the proving grounds but the other thing is in, in in combat conditions russia russia with those shells they built uh, strategic ammunition reserves. So, so uh, and with their production, which now in the West they said that it's about three million shells per per year. I think it's five six million easy. Plus North Korean shells, they uh, they created strategic reserves of the, um, to simplify. They can shoot for years without any um, any effect. In Western yeah. Europe, has nothing to to offer to Ukraine. The production right. the productions are so low that almost like like a teaspoon. Uh, Production levels are like a teaspoon uh, in uh, in the Western Europe, and the bucket uh, of those big, big <laughs> uh, mm. industrial machine buckets uh, in, in, in Russia. So, uh, and that that is the big problem. To to fight the war, they need to have uh, ammunition, and Russia uh, created new, new military district uh, to face. Uh, I think it's in Leningrad uh, military district, so they can now face Finland and Sweden. And this is 70,000 people. So they, they created for 70 to 80,000 people completely uh, a new military uh, military uh, group with all support vehicles, all uh, combat vehicles, all and all ammunition they, they need. Russia can outgun Ukraine 10 to 1, 20 to 1. It's, it's not a big deal. But also bear in mind, during shooting, there is not only ammunition. There is a wear and tear on the on the on the gun, gun uh, on the gun barrels, uh, cradles, uh, all other stuff that is coming. Russia, Russia also uh, um, lift all, uh, lifted that uh, that expectation, and they're producing uh, uh, gun uh, gun uh, gun barrels, uh, uh, all components to the tanks, all components to the to, to artillery. They simply refurbish that, send it to the front, fire three four thousand shells, bring it back. And, uh, and going, uh, you know, back and forth. There is in Rostov. You, Elena, you mentioned uh, Rostov. There is a huge, huge remnant or uh, refurbishing uh, uh, bases there, so close to the front. So they just send them there instead to go to the Tagil, behind the Ur Ural Mountains. Mm -hmm. They refurbish tanks or artillery. They send it back to the front. And uh, this is this is something. Lo logistic is something that that is winning the war. Mm. This is, uh, of course, uh, troops on the front. But uh, Russian logistics is now is uh, it can be it can be uh, compared uh, to any any logistics uh, in the West. Western Western equipment is good for shows, good for exercises, whatever. But once when it comes to the real combat conditions, I'm not uh, with this. I'm not talking about Iraq or Afghanistan, uh, but real combat conditions uh, peer to peer. So, well, that, that's a completely different story. And speaking about logistics, I want to add here because I have uh, listened to Russian military ex well, experts 
they uh, they don't like being called experts, but they are experts because yeah. they are in the military, like Vladimir Truhan, and he yeah. said that uh, logistics is organized that efficiently that military, all the cargo, it goes to the front line in that effective way that uh, even uh, passenger movement of uh, movement of passenger train is not is not affected. So Absolutely. they go, they fit in like in seconds, and everything is delivered that nobody can notice that. Exactly, it's, it, it, uh, it's organizational uh, skills, and to do that, um, several ministries need to be involved: Ministry of Transportation, Ministry of uh, Defense, uh, and uh, when you look uh, what sh what um, Minister Shaigu uh, what he prepared, uh, what he made uh, to to that um, Russian uh, capabilities, he, he is simply genius of the organization. He is simply genius how he organized that stuff. And here, I, I, you know, I thought for for a while if I should bring that topic up or not. It happened, I think, three years, uh, two, three weeks ago. It's about Russian military blogger dies after criticizing army losses. Well, I think I don't know if uh, audience know who who is Andrei Morozov or Murs. Uh, why do you know who Murs is? But he was one of those people, uh, one of those like military bloggers, I'd say, who were. Who Western press was referring to, and he was one of those people who were heavily criticizing, like uh, Shoigu, and they were saying that Russian uh, military bureaucracy is uh, like a killer machine, and they don't know how to do stuff, and we should learn learn from NATO. And West uh, dearly loved people like like him, and after he started saying some things, he got, of course, he got. Uh, as far as I understood, there was some kind of check from uh, special services because he was saying something completely uh, which uh, violated the law, and after that he committed a suicide. So, I, I mean, it's it's hard to say. Uh, it's bad for him. I'm, I'm sorry for him. But, uh, yeah. but you know, your your country is fighting war. Uh, imagine what what can happen with those people in Ukraine who. Who talk about uh, errors and mistakes and uh, casualties in, in Ukraine? It's it's even it's much much worse. But we also bear in mind that there was a terrorist attacks on, on other Russian bloggers that, that happened in uh, Saint, uh, Saint Petersburg. They killed yeah. the blogger also. They killed the daughter of uh, Dugin. Yeah. So mm. it's it's ridiculous. Uh, and but when you when you pop up that. Um, that picture of what I saw was uh, New York Times. Hmm. Well, and, and, enough, eh? and I, I would say to the people who would suggest foul play is involved, I mean, th there's a fair amount of criticism of the Russian Ministry of Defense from a lot of bloggers out there. I think if if uh, there's any foul play involved, I think there's there's a lot of people out there that would have been dealt with in that time. So I think I, I, I seriously doubt there was any foul play. It seems to me like he probably had a lot of personal issues uh, from the sound of it. You know. I, don't, I, I believe uh, I'm not familiar with, uh, with, with the uh, complete event. I'm sorry for the, for that person. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if, if, if um, uh, criticizing uh, Russian ministry, yeah, by all means, mm -hmm. if they're doing something wrong, yeah, criticize them. That, 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 that shows the, the health of, of society. Uh, uh, but there is a how to criticize. One thing is criticizing. Um, other uh, other thing is um, if somebody, for instance, is working, is paid to do that uh, by foreigners. That would be treason in that, in, in that case. Mm. And and yeah, I've, I mean, we've witnessed a, a fair amount of the uh, the blogger sphere uh, on Telegram as well that uh, put out some information. Some oftentimes even outright misinformation. Uh, in their, you know, criticisms of the Russian Ministry of Defense. So there's plenty of people out there getting away with quite a lot as far as negativity and, and all of that. So, I mean, this this idea that, like, Russia's locked down any criticism of the leadership, it just isn't true. It just isn't no, true. No, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I believe there is a... Ukraine is a, is locked regarding to, to criticism. Uh, right. But I don't think it, 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 Russia is, is locked. Uh, well, I mean, it's uh, it is it, it is simply it is what it is. Uh, some there there are issues that, uh, for instance, with Navalny, with that, with that guy, that will be always uh, used and abused, uh, and that is that is a proposed. There are services who who working to exploit that kind of stuff. 
Mm -hmm. Right. And, and speaking of Navalny, I, I remember a few months ago, this story kind of came and went. If you remember the assassination of Zakhar Prelipin, who was actually someone that Navalny founded a political organization with uh, in the early 2010s. Uh, but I, I, he had been loyal to Russia. Uh, he was, I believe he was Ukrainian, but loyal to Russia. And he was living in, in I believe, St. Petersburg. Well, Prelipin is alive. It wasn't Prelipin. Oh, it wasn't? Sorry. It was... Um... No, Zakhar is alive. He's uh, he was like uh, hmm. they tried to eliminate him, but he, but but Plepin is alive. Uh, the person who you're speaking, who was uh, hmm. assassinated in Saint Petersburg, was uh, yeah, I, 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 I can't remember the name, but uh, I don't think uh, it was like a Martin Tatarsky. I remember. No, 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 no. no. Uh... I'm I'm sorry then. Sorry, I, dig I digress. Yeah, yeah the, that's fine. I mean, political mm -hmm. opposition uh, is okay, but uh, West try to put Navalny like an important uh, person in Russia. Maybe one percent of people really follow him, or maybe even less. Uh, the real opposition in Russia is, is Yuganov, Communist Party. Mm. As far as I heard, it's uh, Slutsky with LDPR. But LDPR and the uh, Communist Party, they yeah. had like the same amount of voters. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, that is opposition. But uh, if opposition in Russia is not uh, dancing according to the tunes of the Western uh, Western orders or Western, Western orchestras, uh, yeah, they're, they're not important. Uh, Navalny is like, um, uh, it will be like uh, Guaido from Venezuela. Just, just, just a clown. Now his wife is enjoying uh, all the benefits uh, of her position. Yeah, and it is more, more than you, you know. You have now we woman in the lead, so it is like it's following a, the agenda too. It's a story for us, the story to to sell to the masses, so that, uh, that the news media and the TV, those big TV uh, networks can talk something and and sell uh, advertisement in, in that uh, prime time. But speaking of Russian opposition, I was speaking to people in Russia who are like versed in political all the political stuff, and they said that we do not fear pro-West uh, coup or Maidan or call it whatever. Uh, the biggest threat is so-called patriotic Maidan, which could could be used by Western fo forces too. So they they are because some forces in Russia they think that Putin is too mild. Putin must be uh, like more harsh. We need more like dictatorship, and uh, we are going too much. We are still very pro-Western, and we need somebody who is like more strict. <laughs> and those people, like my friends, they are afraid that those people can gain popularity, uh, make some kind of coup, and that will end badly for Russia. Yeah, well, they will not. They will. They will not. I mean, popularity of uh, President Putin is outstanding. So he's he's the true leader of Russia. And uh, if, if, for instance, any any Western leader was on, on his uh, his place, uh, Ukraine will cease to exist a long time ago. Uh, yeah, that is true. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think we can sum up already because it's like nearly yeah. an hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to keep the mm -hmm. short that people can uh, can sit and, and watch that. <laughs> yeah. right, right. And your smartphone survived that long, so that yeah, yeah, it, it, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's working. Uh, I tried my computer, but somehow in office, uh, I, I can't get uh, WhatsApp, so I have to use that from. Sometimes I get, I can, but today it doesn't work. Uh, maybe you could send me your email. I will email. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, then thanks mm -hmm. everyone. I think it was a very interesting discussion. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Zin. Yeah, it was Glad really fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Later. Bye. Mm -hmm.